welcome back to another Archicad Speed modeling tutorial by ASM Tech Base. My name is Carsten MD. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get notified when a new video is out by clicking on the little bell. And every so often, if you really like a video, please click the like button, because this will put up my ranking on YouTube and help other Archicad users too. All right, so this is the base I've got in Archicad. Let me have a quick um, view in 3D. So it's very simple, small house here. And I used the mesh tool to create this sloping garden size. So you can see it slopes quite a bit. So this one I want to do now. I want to add a sloping path going up here um, and include some nice stones in there and make it all fit and look nice. So let me go back to my 2D. I used a spline tool to create a spline going that way and then I just offset the spine either way by 600 so the path is 1200 wide. Important is if I zoom in to make sure that you um, overlap, you see here it's overlapping the spline and at the other end you have to close the spline. Okay, so here it has to be closed. So that's important because you will see in a moment what I'm doing. What I like to do is I like to select the mesh and now just click on this spline path. This will create a hole in the mesh adjusted exactly to the heights to where I cut it off. So to do this, you select the mesh, you gotta make sure you're in the mesh tool and you hold down space bar and it will look for, you can see it will look for somewhere to click. And as you can see, there's a little problem here. It just can't get the whole path in. That can happen sometimes. Even so, I closed the spline and I overlapped here. So what you can do is, let me deselect, you go to the fill tool. Don't worry about the fill. It really is not important what type of fill. If I now go on the space bar and search again, you can see it must be because it's a 2D tool. It's actually sort of recognizes the spline outside. So I can just now click and it should, okay, it didn't quite do this, let's try it again, but it should go and create a fill along the spline path. Let me do that again. Outside, great, doesn't want to do it this time. Okay, what I can do is let me let me take this and delete, and I'm going inside, all right, and click again. All right, so that works better. The middle spline needs to go. Okay, now because you got this fill, let me select this fill. So it went exactly along the spline. And if I now select the mesh again, and I go to my mesh tool, and now I do the space bar click. If I now go in here, it should be able to recognize the hole better because I'm trying to take the fill only. So let me have a look. A little bit of a struggle here. So deselect, see we're working this out together, which is good. That's why it's a little tutorial. So select this, move it to the top, bring to front. So just click here. And now this is at the front, the fill. Let me try again. I go to the mesh, I click the mesh and let's try this again. Yeah, there you go. So this is what I do all the time. You know, if you find something doesn't work, just think about it quick. Well, there's a reason it doesn't work because I've done it before. So this was very clearly I needed to move the fill to the front. Okay, let me click here now. And we got these new mesh points um, window coming up. And I like to create a hole and I like to fit to user reaches. So let me click OK. And it will create this hole. So in 3D, I've got now the path cut out and you can see it's exactly along the height. Okay, you can always adjust them if you like, but it's pretty good. So for now, I'm happy to leave this. Great, so if you got the hole, the next bit is now to create the path. Before we continue, if you're keen to learn some more, check out my website. I've got courses, I've got ebooks and other stuff that could be useful for you. So what I will do is create the path with a handrail. Okay, before I can use the railing tool now, I need to create um, a profile and i show you what I did. Very simple one, I created a path. Let me edit quickly. So this one is 1200 wide because that's my path width. It's a normal just fill. I made the height 100. 
that's all I did and then you just get out of it. I gave it a little um, surface for me now at the moment because of the tool I just put it at paint a one. Great, so I can use this in my handrail now. So you go to the handrail tool and if you have a default setting over here, you can see you can click and I probably just take um, an empty one there blank railing. So you just double click it selected and we open the rail. So you can see it's an empty one. And here I just want to add only one rail. So you see you go here, if it's opening like this in your default railing, go down to handrails. Actually, no, I like to do rails. So I click plus and you just move down here, just go around down here and you click. And what we are gonna do is now instead of rail 25, I want to use a profile rail. So I'm clicking here and then I can choose my path. All right, there we go already, path one. Cool, it's very simple. And you can see at the moment, let's just keep it at rail height. I want to put this at zero. Fixing, I don't need a fixing. So just go through the settings here, have a quick look, you make sure everything is okay. And then if you're happy with it, you click OK. I might have to check the material quick. Yes, I like to override the surface and I like to use paint all one. Just the same as I did in the profile. Great. For this tutorial, I put it on the ArchiCAD layer. I click OK. Next bit is let's go into 3D. Now in 3D, you can now easy click along this path. OK. But before we do that, make sure you have this not on static, I like you to do it on associative. Same with here, associative, right? So let me start. So after this railing selected, zoom in a little bit and you just start here. So I click and it starts drawing the railing obviously. So what I do is you go along here and you will see sometimes you'll get that little hammer, okay? So the hammer's coming up. Yeah, when you see the hammer, you click. All right, and then you keep going till you find the next hammer. It's a bit unfortunate that it doesn't show in 3D where the, actually poly, where the actual polygons are. It's a bit annoying, but that's the way it is. So you can see there seems to be a hammer there and a hammer there. So just do the first hammer, you click, and you go to the next one. And there's another hammer there, I think. Yeah, click. It's a bit fiddly, but it's important you do it that way. Because what happens is it automatically, you probably noticed, it goes and curves along the cutout path. Actually, you can see that's, that's where the polygons are. Can you see there's one there, there's three there, one there. Interesting, haven't even noticed that before. But I almost have to maybe out here. Okay, cool, so I can go straight to this now. There you go, hammer. Okay, I'm coming to the last one now, and the last one, I double click. Go there, double click. Okay, as you can see, it just now did draw this, well, handrail, which looks like a path nicely along our slope. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now, obviously, it doesn't fit there because the path is flat, which we usually do. Okay, so it's going nice and flat around, so you can walk perfectly nice. Great, so you got this now. The next bit I like to do is actually, we're gonna add some stones to this path. It would be easy just to finish the tutorial here, but I like to add some stones to make it more exciting. Great, for this I prepared something. Let me um, show this layer quickly. And, oh, must be the other one. There we go. Okay, what I did is I just found some sort of stone texture online and I scaled it down a bit. Cool, now the next bit is I actually just drew along, zoomed in and you can see I clicked along with some slabs. So if I select this here now, suspend groups. So this is a simple slab. All right, let me have a look. It looks, yeah, there we go. Just a very slim, simple slab. So all I did is click along 
and created those different random stones. Cool, I grouped them as you can see. So let me go there, I grouped them and then I started copying it over here. Now you can see, you can start copying and it will be always the same. So there's a little thing you can do. You can go to drag and randomize, increment and spread. Look, that's just an example you don't have to. You can just copy over here, rotate, copy, rotate, that's fine. But if you do this, let me go over, maybe this way. Okay, and now, as you can see, it rotates it randomly already for me. So now it's a bit easier. I can just say, okay, let me take this one here, you know, move it over here. Or this one, move it there. So it's just, you know, it's just something very quickly done the randomness and then you move it instead of copying, move and rotate. Okay, after you copy them around, there obviously is some more gaps you have to fill up. Let me just zoom in. So what you do is you go to the slab tool and you just add a couple more little stones here. You know, they can overlap again, that's all good. The main thing is you just try to finish them off and close the gaps. All right, I closed those gaps. Let me have a quick look in 3D. So we have all those stone, sort of, you've got all the stones ready now to add to the path. Great, so let me just, let me do that I can select all of them together. I think I do, and let me group this. It's easy to select after. All right, cool, so I've got them all grouped, so we can now change them. Because what I need to do is I need to extend them down. So let me just open here. We can do it visually, or I can do it just open the window here of the slab settings. It's only 100 at the moment. Let's make a um, five meters and see what happens here. We extend it down. There you go. That's definitely enough. Yeah, looking good. Excellent. All right. We select this and we also select the path. I can zoom in here. You can do it in 2D, but let me try to zoom in. Handrail, go to the handrail tool and should be able to select the handrail. And yes, and you just hit F5. All right, so we got only the path and we do have the stones. If I go and show this in wireframe, it's a little bit easy to see not much to be honest because there's quite a lot of polygons so i'm quite happy going back to my shading great we're using now the s uh, solid element operation seo and what i do is i will select my stones and i'll be a target and i like to select my handrail there we go the handrail which is an operator and instead of subtraction i like you to do intersection and we just execute. Okay, so deselect, and then you can see that it can, it happens every so often, unfortunately, that there's one that it doesn't like to do. So we just have to delete it or, you know, do it again, but this is so small for me now. Let me just, oops, suspend groups. I think I can, just delete this for now. Yeah, I think that's fine. Great, so we got now the stones in there, but they're exactly level with the path and you can see they're not really cut out. Okay, that's how it's looking now. To make it a bit more exciting, I added a couple of textures. You can see, assuming that just some mulch there and this is a bit of a stone texture. Now you see at the moment, they're still level, which obviously is not very nice. So what you do is two things. First, we select the stones and then we right click and we convert them to a morph, which I already did because it'll take a couple of minutes with that many stones. And the reason we do this is because the stones are still associated with the SEO to the path. So if I elevate the stones, it just keeps cutting it off. So we need to separate the connection we have through the SEO. So I need to break this link. So I just converted it 
who are morph. So you can see all those stones are morphs now. So if I go in here now and elevate this, let me elevate this by 10 and let's see what happens now. There you go. So they do stick out now. Might be a bit much 10, but it depends what you want to do for this tutorial. It's a bit better. It shows up nicer for you guys. Okay, so that's all I did. So that path is done. If I now go back to my 2D, you can see there's some leftovers in there. Um, you can obviously delete them. You don't need them anymore. You see outside here of the path. So if we're going to 3D now with the whole of the model, and you can see now the next step is sort of the final step. You do have to go obviously click in here and all you do is you elevate what you need up to the path. Okay, I did all this for you and you can see it actually fits pretty well. You know, I'm quite happy with this. So you can see, there you go. You can always adjust it, but I think it looks pretty good and it's a sloping path with some nice stones in it. This is actually rendering nice too because the stones are just popping out above the main path a little bit. And it can look even better if you're a twin motion user. This is what I rendered up in twin motion and I think the path looks pretty cool. And if you're keen to see how I did this, stay around and watch the next video, which is about how to add landscape, textures and other little items into motion to make it look great.